Hello everybody, we're back at it again with another update from the Roborocus challenge and uh, we've actually, from the robot in 30 hours, we've actually ended up finishing our robot in just about 29 hours. So here today we're going to be explaining to you about every single component that we have. So I'm going to start off with what we have with the dumper over here. So from the last time you saw that we added a lip here, we added a hood as well, but we actually decided to scrap all that. After doing a bit of iterative designing and testing, we realized it was a lot more advantageous to do two more things. First off, to cut off the lip, and the second thing, to unbend this hood and add a couple of standoffs here. This way, it allowed us to actually collect the blocks effectively. For example, like this, you could collect them both here, and while the intake was running, which is down here, it would still be able to keep it in without flying out. And the same thing happened with the balls. You still have enough space for both of this, and you have ample enough room to move around. Now as for the intake, the intake was the same continuous intake that we had continued to use, but the main difference here is that initially we used to have six pegs, but now indeed we end up having four pegs. Now the reason why we decided to have four individual intakes here was mainly because we could space this out to provide us with that advantageous area. Because as you can see we have three little gaps here, and with those gaps we have four specific areas for those four individual pegs. And that's the way that the dumper and the intake system work together. As for the quickly about the six wheel drive, the way our six wheel drive worked is that we had a never sporty alongside a 1.5 to 1 ratio and we did indeed have a drop center and this is based off of solely Actobotics parts. What we did is that we took the bottom half 1 fourth inch bore uh, millimeter pillow blocks and we decided to use those at the bottom and we screwed them in and that way this provided us with around a 3 16th inch drop which provided us with the uh, advantageous ability to climb over the ramp. So in the beginning of our discussions, we had sort of decided we had thought about two main ways to um, score our uh, to score the end game objective of the hanging. We had thought either to use uh, the, the same uh, the same linear lift me mechanism that we used for scoring the blocks and balls, or we decided that we uh, we may also want to have a separate um, linear slide dedicated solely to the hang. Um, after a lot of thought and discussion, we decided to actually create a completely secondary linear slide, specifically meant for the hang. This mechanism on the top of this slide is uh, the same mechanism that we showed you earlier in one of the earlier um, event updates, and it basically functions by having a spring-loaded uh, servo, which uh, uh, puts all the weight on the, uh, on the spring and on the mechanism instead of on the servo. And also, um, one of the main ways that we were able to be very successful and very, very quick with this robot um, was through the scoring uh, of, of our debris. Um, well, not the debris, of the particles here. Um, so we, uh, as, as Advaith mentioned, we had actually created this linear lift, um, and this lift actually is powered in both the up and down directions. We have two simultaneous pulleys, which allow us to go up and down as quickly as possible to maximize our cycle times. And, of course, last but definitely not least, we have our team marker deposit. The team marker deposit was a bit of an afterthought, as you can see here. We showed you this team marker a bit earlier, and um, this will sort of this allows us to simply drive an autonomous and dump ourselves out. Um, so we we would uh, th this and th this is basically the conclusion of the entirety of our um, of our uh, rover ruckus robot. We've been uh, we've been having an, an incredible time the past 29 hours, um, really functioning uh, as as well as possible, uh, combining our two teams and really having a blast in the process. Um, we'd love to thank you all for uh, tuning in so religiously, um, asking your questions on the Twitch stream, which we're actually going to address in a few short moments, and um, just being uh, overall uh, so supportive. So, Advi, do you want to start with one of the questions that was on the chat? Yeah, so one of these questions specifically were about the six-wheel drive, and this was how advantageous is this drop center that we decided to use. Now, like I mentioned previously, the drop center is based off of natural Actobotics parts, so if you were to shop off of Actobotics, you could find these parts easily. One thing I believe that Shashir showed you in the second update, you may have not seen clearly because the lighting was quite poor, but we actually had a bunch of supports on here that you can see, but this right here is that bottom tap 1 4th inch uh, bore uh, pillow block that we actually used. So this did provide us with that 360 inch drop, which was quite advantageous because if everything was in the same plane, if we were to get over the first part, and let's just assume that the, uh, the rim of the crater was right here, we wouldn't really have much of uh, an area to actually drive with, right? The only wheels that we would have are this one and this one, but this middle wheel won't necessarily touch, but the back wheel might possibly touch, but this middle wheel being dropped down a little bit lower allowed us to get that grip for us to get that extra around so we could get that back wheel powered and everything will be inside the crater at the end of the time. 
So there were actually quite a few questions about our six-wheel drive. One of the other questions that were asked was um, how how um, far uh, how how far is the bottom of your wheels to the bottom of your chassis? And um, based because we, as Adith mentioned, because we went entirely off of active bodies parts, this was actually only a one-inch gap. Um, and the other question that was asked relating to, pertaining to this was um, how effective we were at actually getting into the crater zone and being able to collect and score debris. Um, we are, this drivetrain is fully capable of getting into the crater zone by itself. We've tried it forwards, backwards, uh, fast, slow, all these uh, combinations, all, and all of them are successful. Unfortunately, when there is a lot of debris, this drivetrain has a, a huge struggle of simply getting beached on this debris and can't really um, get its grip after it gets into that crater, um, which resulted in us getting stuck in quite a few of our attempts. So if you are to go with a very stock anti uh, Actobotics chassis, please be careful and be prepared to do your own modifications. <coughs> well, thank you so much for um, everything that you guys have done. Um, because we are uh, done with our robot, and because we uh, sort of have a nice long day of school ahead of us, we'd like to sign off this uh, Twitch stream early. Thank you so much for your continued support. See you later!